The topic today is incest and inbreeding. Our story begins in the Netherlands at The Hague Central Station in 2015, where a woman met with a man for a brief moment to exchange 164 euros or about $177 for the man's sperm. Her name is Vanessa, a 34-year-old successful and single woman with the desire to become a mother. She tried to do this through fertility clinics in the Netherlands, but the prices were more expensive than living in Condesa. She opted for the second option, finding a sperm donor herself. She quickly found one through a website called Desire a Child, and the chosen candidate was Jonathan Miger. After their transaction at the central station, Vanessa became pregnant and gave birth to her first daughter. According to Jonathan, the donor, this was his eighth child. Up to this point, everything seemed fine. But there was a small detail. Jonathan was lying. The daughter conceived by insemination with Vanessa was not his eighth child, Jonathan had fathered at least 102 children in the Netherlands. Today, Jonathan Miger, 41, is the father of at least 550 children within the Netherlands because he has spent the last 15 years compulsively donating sperm, which is actually prohibited. In the Netherlands, when registering as a sperm donor at a fertility clinic, you must assure the clinic that you have not donated sperm to other clinics and do not plan to do so. Additionally, each clinic will distribute a donor's sperm to a maximum of 12 women, meaning the maximum number of children a donor can have is 25, considering there might be twins. However, besides being a crypto bro and uploading incredibly cringe videos to YouTube, this man decided to lie, thus risking hundreds of people, not only in the Netherlands because he also made international shipments. Of course, even Uber Eats didn't arrive as quickly as this man's sperm. But you may wonder why this is a risk. This man, with a Genghis Khan complex, has created a community of people who share the same father. The answer is simple. In a community full of relatives, the risk of these relatives pairing up and having offspring increases. This brings us back to the central topic of this video, inbreeding or incest. Today's protagonists will be some of your favorite royalty figures, like Tutankhamun, completely deformed due to incest, Charles II of Spain, completely deformed due to incest, and the Tsars of Russia, not precisely deformed due to incest, but still in the picture. Inbreeding refers to sexual relations between people who are closely related by blood, such as between siblings, parents and children, or first cousins. Biologically, incest is considered maladaptive behavior because it increases the risk of genetic diseases and congenital defects in offspring. To understand this, we need to understand a bit about how genetic inheritance works. Humans have two copies of each gene, one inherited from each parent. Having two copies of each gene is great. It's like having two phone chargers. If one breaks, it's no problem. You use the other one. This is usually how genes work. If one gene is defective but the defect is only present in one of the copies, the other copy of the gene can normally compensate for the defect and prevent the disease from manifesting. However, if an individual has two copies of the defective gene, the disease will manifest. Visually, it would look like this. We can have two perfectly healthy parents who are carriers of a defective copy of a certain gene. As both have a functional copy of the gene, they live their lives without problems and without the disease. Their offspring will receive a copy from each parent in a completely random way. The possible combinations are as follows. One child receives the functional gene from the father plus the functional gene from the mother. This child would be healthy and not a carrier of the disease, meaning the disease would disappear from their lineage. Another combination is that they receive one functional gene from one parent and one defective gene from the other parent. Finally, one unlucky child could receive the two defective genes from both parents and the disease would manifest. Note that this applies to diseases caused by a single gene and also that these are probabilities. It doesn't mean that the first child will be healthy, then two carriers, and the last one sick. These are probabilities, meaning that when two parents carry the same defective gene, they have a 25% chance of having healthy children a 50% chance of having unaffected carriers, and a 25% chance of having children with the disease. The parents might be very lucky, and all their children are healthy, which is unlikely, or very unlucky, and all their children have problems, 
which can also happen. The more children this couple conceives, of course, the higher the probabilities that one will be healthy or one will be sick. The distribution of genes works totally randomly. This only shows the possible combinations according to the available cards. We understand how inheritance works, and you probably already imagine what happens next. When two related individuals have children, there is a higher probability that both carry the same defective gene, increasing the likelihood that the disease will manifest in the offspring. This is because relatives are more likely to inherit the same allele of a gene from a common ancestor. This is simple logic. People who are closely related genetically share more genes than people who are not related genetically. When two people with different genetic backgrounds have children, the offspring inherit a variety of genes from each parent. This increases genetic diversity and reduces the risk of genetic problems in the offspring. Again, this reduces the risk. Of course, we could go all the way to China to find a partner and find the one Chinese person who, by chance, has the same defective copy of the gene we carry, and we would have a child with problems. The possibility exists this is why there are diseases that occur in one in a million births in the general population. But in cases of inbreeding, we can find that same disease in 10 people on the same block. Clearly, we share many genes with our family. Some of us look like copies of our parents. In numbers, we share 50% of our genes with our parents and siblings, 25% with our half-siblings, and 12.5% with our first cousins. The more genes we share, the higher the possibility that one of those shared genes is the defective copy of a gene. And with this, we open the way to the most famous examples of incest. Tell me, who are famous for marrying and having children among relatives? Royalty. The most common cases of incest come from royalty. In fact, someone you surely know, the most famous pharaoh of Egypt, Tutankhamun, had a terribly tormented life due to inherited ailments, as his mother and father were siblings and he came from a tremendous lineage of incest. It is said that he spent much of his life sitting because he had Kohler disease. This disease kills the bones of the feet, leaving them completely useless. Besides this, he had scoliosis, a deformed spine, and could not move his neck because two of his vertebrae were fused. Tutankhamun had 130 walking sticks. Although he spent most of his life bedridden and died at the young age of 19, and people complain about what we've done to pugs when we do worse things to ourselves. In Europe, they didn't lag behind, and the monarchy also put a lot of effort into marrying within the family. Many alliances were also formed through marriage, but defective gene could travel far. Queen Victoria of England was a carrier of hemophilia without knowing it. What is hemophilia, you might ask? Hemophilia prevents proteins called fibrins from forming a scab over a cut or forming clots to stop internal bleeding. Since there are no clots to stop the bleeding, it can cause severe hemorrhages that last days or weeks, and even cause death from a simple cut. The disease is recessive and carried on the X chromosome, meaning men are more likely to develop it, while women are usually carriers and do not show symptoms. Queen Victoria married one of her cousins, and all the children from the marriage always had poor health. Her son Leopold, Duke of Albany, slipped and bled to death from the impact of the fall. Her grandson Friedrich bled to death at the age of two, as did her grandsons Maurice at 23 and Leopold at 32. The problem is that Victoria's descendants would marry into the royal families of Germany, Russia, and Spain, bringing along the family hemophilia and creating crises within the monarchies. Alexandra, who would eventually marry Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, brought hemophilia into the Russian royal house. This was the case of Prince Alexei, Nicholas II's son, and Queen Victoria's great-grandson. From a young age, Alexei was prone to prolonged bleeding, and his family feared he wouldn't survive his first month of life. His parents were so worried that they brought in Rasputin, a mystical and healer from Siberia, whose only goal was to keep the heir to the throne alive. Rasputin managed to keep Alexei alive, which eventually led to him having a lot of influence over the royal family, to the point that it is speculated that Rasputin's influence over the royal family contributed in some way to the fall of the Romanov dynasty. The whole populace mocked and suspected the relationship between the mystic and the czars. Finally, the disease didn't kill Alexei, 
He was assassinated at the age of 13 in 1918, along with the rest of the Russian royal family by the Bolsheviks during the revolution. Incest would bring down another great monarchy in Europe, the Habsburg family of Spain. These are the worst of the worst. They would have had children with themselves if they could have. Out of 11 marriages, nine were incestuous, which eventually led to one of the most deformed faces in monarchy history. The decline of the family was caused by a combination of factors, political, economic, social problems, military defeats, etc. But the family also stopped producing capable rulers. The descendants lived short lives, were fragile, deformed, with cognitive delays, and occasionally sprinkled with hemophilia. The last link of the Habsburg family of Spain was Charles II, who was so deformed from incest that he was mocked by his subjects. They called him the Bewitched, because only witchcraft could explain such deformity. He couldn't speak until he was four years old, and even when he learned to speak, he never managed to do it well due to the anatomy of his face. What you see here is called the Habsburg Jaw, and we can think that their subjects were being nice because it is reported that the protruding jaws were so extreme that they made them drool constantly. Charles II barely mumbled when speaking, didn't walk until he was eight years old, and lived his entire life surrounded by illnesses. It is said that people were surprised he reached 30 years old, and that by the age of 35, he was completely bald and wasted. He never managed to have offspring, and would indeed be the last king of the Habsburgs. Incest deteriorated the genetic line so much that it eventually destroyed it. What's the moral of this story? Firstly, don't marry your cousins. And secondly, if you are concerned about a genetic disease in your family, talk to a doctor or geneticist to get your profile and understand which genes you carry. In cases like that of the compulsive donor in the Netherlands, new restrictions have been instituted and a national donor registry to prevent a repeat of the abomination this man caused in the future. Biologically, incest is moving backward. You risk your lineage, and eventually biology closes the tap on you.